As a producer, it is not only your responsibility to block the show and write much of the copy, and proof most of the rest, it is also your responsibility to determine what kinds of shots or visuals you want in the studio. This includes the camera shots and angles, and the graphics. The talking head is the most boring shot, and it is just what the name implies. It is a one shot, or one person on camera, dominating the screen, talking to the camera. The example you see here is from a baseball pregame show where Vin Scully is greeting the audience and welcoming the viewers to the game. It works just fine here. He is the voice of Major League Baseball, or was until he retired after 2016, and he gets the talent some face time. My guess is he did a brief welcome to the game, and then the camera widened out to bring his color commentator into the shot for a two-shot. If you were in the studio, these are the kinds of shots you would use for a reader, and is usually going to be employed with an over-the-shoulder graphic, also called a box or OTS, but more on that later. They should be used only for brief 15 to 20 second stories, or a short series of 15 to 20 second stories, and they can be used in combination if you have more than one anchor. So A1 does a reader, A2 does a couple readers, A1 does another reader, and then you want to get to a package or some video. You heard me mention earlier a two shot. That is when you have two people on camera. A three shot then would be three people on camera, and so on. You would want a two shot for the opening, close, and perhaps a toss to break when you're going to have the, uh, the anchors interacting. If you have three people on the desk, this is when you'd use a three shot. Basically, if you're going to have some interaction, or if you're going to have rapid changes in who is speaking, you want to go to a two or three shot, again, depending on how many people you have on the desk. What I've demonstrated for you here is a basic anchor and camera setup like we would use for a show and like you often see it on a sportscast or a newscast. A1 is anchor 1 and A2 is anchor 2. C1 is camera 1 and would get the 2 shot. It would be locked down to give the wide shot. It might open even wider and then slowly zoom in as the show opens, but it's going to stay pretty stationary. C2 is camera 2 and it's going to give you the 1 shot on anchor 1. Likewise, C3 is camera 3 and is going to give you the 1 shot on anchor 1. These two may require some movement. You may want the anchor centered up to begin the shot and then have the camera operator pan to the left or right to make room for an over-the-shoulder graphic. Not to be confused with the over-the-shoulder graphic, the over-the-shoulder shot is used in a one-on-one -on -one interview setting. In this case, you would have camera one positioned just as I showed you on the previous slide to get the two shot. But instead of cameras two and three being in front of the host and guest, they'd be behind them so the respective one shots could be just of one person or they could zoom out and get the back of the head and one shoulder of the second person. Do keep in mind that these are used more often in cinema than in news, but they are still used in interview settings. Why would you do this? Really, it's just a creative way to show both subjects in the shot and to draw your audience in. If in this scene from the movie Crash, you want a close-up to be able to see Terrence Howard's facial features as he's speaking, but you also want to show there's a second person in the scene, the over-the-shoulder is a good technique. You could also flip it. If the other person is speaking, you may want to see Terrence Howard's reaction. You can do this with your basic two-shot, but in the interview, the subjects are going to be facing each other more than they are going to be facing the camera, so you'll lose some of this effect. You also cannot get as close up a shot to see the emotion on that two-shot, so by taking this angle, you can bring the audience into the shot more intimately. Now let's talk a little about graphics. We're going to discuss supers, chroma key, boxes, computer art, and crawls. Super is short for superimposed, and it refers to any graphic or text that is laid over the video. We do this in our live productions with our lower third graphics and our scoreboards. In a studio setting, they are the few words that explain the graphic on the screen. Produced on character generators and stored in computer memories, these are often called lower thirds because that is the most common type in studio productions. They identify people, give locations, exact addresses, times, whether or not it's live, and they are used to highlight summarize points being made on camera. But supers also refer to the station bug you might see in the lower or upper, co upper corner of the screen, or they could refer to the box you often see on the left side of the screen on SportsCenter where they tease the stories coming up in that segment. Over the shoulders are also often used as supers. Chroma key is just a fancy word for green screen or blue screen. Here a camera is programmed to drop out everything of a particular color on the screen. So in the example here, anything in green is dropped out and is replaced with whatever is programmed into the camera. In this example from the 2017 MIAA tournament, a virtual set is programmed into the TriCaster. The camera is programmed to drop the green and replace it with the set. These are often used for weather maps in the evening news, but may also be used to fill the screen with any other graphic or photo. The key is to remember this. If you are using a green screen, your talent cannot wear green. The other common color is a blue screen, and the same rule applies. 
One challenge to using the chroma key is that lighting is critical. If you have too much lighting, you'll saturate your subjects and you'll get bleed through. Not enough, and the effect will cause really harsh shadows. Boxes, or over-the-shoulder graphics, commonly called an OTS, are used with talking heads and readers. They most frequently are used as a super or when you cut the box out of the shot of the newscaster and then fit a graphic into that box. In this example from Sports Page, we used a television monitor for the same effect. We're seeing more and more of this. Boxes are, gen boxes are generally used with some textual description. Be careful to choose the words wisely and they have to as they have to remain faithful to the meaning of the story. If, for example, the text here said women's basketball standouts, that would not be entirely accurate. That implies the story is about their prowess on the court, but in this case, the story is about their efforts in the classroom. Computer art, as the name suggests, is graphics that are generated on the computer and it may include diagrams, maps, charts, and graphs. They can be created using what's called Electronic Paint Box, an expensive computer graphics system made by Quantel where a whole section of maps is stored. You can then pick one and then can use your stylus to indicate arrows for a path. They can be used with videotape in a story as well. This is what you see when the analysts bring up a bit of video from a football game, freeze it, and draw on it to indicate where the coverage was weak and why the touchdown pass was completed. In general news, they are mainly seen on weather maps. Computer art also comes in the form of motion graphics, such as you might make on After Effects. The example here is a motion graphic, although I can't actually show it moving on a still image. One note, if you like this sort of thing, there is a major market in sports for people with graphic skills. Crawls are continuous news tickers that scroll across the bottom of the screen during some news programs. In sports, they are used for things like score updates, upcoming matchups, and headlines. They are usually written in all capital letters and perfect present tense. They should be extra short, like headlines, and abbreviations can be used more and without periods. They are used to summarize the latest news, but they often don't answer the basic questions such as when and why. Personally, I love crawls, but I often find myself reading them and then realizing I have no clue what the reporters and analysts have been saying. As a final word on visuals, and I cannot stress this enough, use the medium. You have an opportunity to use visuals, be they video, a creative use of your cameras in the studio, or graphics. More and more, as I said, graphics are becoming important, and as such, there is a huge market for broadcast professionals who know graphics. Job one for the producer is to inform your audience. That's a given. But you also want to entertain them with compelling visuals so they keep coming back. The secret is to not overdo it. We don't want to see a box and a lower third in the same shot because it's too confusing. And if you're going to use a ticker, make sure your stories are brief. If you have a series of readers, don't popcorn your shots by bouncing from anchor one to anchor two to anchor one and so on. Rather have anchor one read a couple and then go to anchor two. And then mix in some video and have the anchors voice over. Once you have gotten your writing skills done, and remember it all starts there, and you have discovered your rhythm in producing the visuals in the newsroom, you are well on your way to becoming a quality producer.